Hello, this is Matt McDonald from Axis Game Factory. Um, I've been ha getting a lot of requests for a quick tutorial on how the uh, terrain editor works. Um, so I'm going to put together a real quick and dirty demo for you. I'll, I'll upgrade this video to a later date, but uh, this will get you guys over the hump for now. So what I've started with was one of the presets um, that comes with the program. You can see it's the one with uh, the water, obviously, in it. and um, what you usually want to do when you start an environment, you want to center your creation to the world itself or your, where you're going to be building, well, we're going to build an island here. So by hitting the home button up here at the short window, it puts you right in the middle. By hitting the tab button on your keyboard, I'm not pressing or holding any of the mouse buttons, I'm just hitting the tab button, you're going to see a grid appear. The grid, um, the grid's always there it's just that it was below the actual terrain surface itself. Now as you see I I right click here um, the radial menu comes up and you can hover on, over any of these buttons here to bring up other menus. By holding down the space bar you can also hover over any other um, windows that are available in AGF. So by releasing the right mouse button you can select that that particular window. This is the terrain editor window. All of these windows can be dragged anywhere you'd like and placed. Um, they can also be collapsed in different manners. Um, and you can also dock these particular windows into what we call the dock um, and reorganize them as you like. Now the, the placement of these windows and their location on the dock is kept within the scene file. So every time you save a scene, whatever state this uh, menu is at the dock, um, it'll retain that information. So what we're going to do is quickly um, create some terrain. So all I have to do is float my um, brush over the terrain. We know that we're in sculpting mode because the, the checkbox here shows us that it's enabled. And I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button to start pulling up the terrain. Now you see that the camera moves to where I'm clicking. That's intended because the, the software's made that it moves the viewport so that it centers your work area where you're working to the location that you last worked. The nice thing about that is you spend less time moving your camera around to see your creation and more time actually creating. So you can see as I click and drag off in the distance that the camera follows me as I move around to create an island. Now the rate of speed at which the terrain is sculpted or displaced is based on the power that is set for the brush itself in sculpting mode. To see that we're going to open up the little sculpting button here and you can see there's a number here power and I can adjust the power with the slide bar and on uh, the PC and the Linux you can use the shift button and your middle mouse button to adjust the power. You can see as I'm rolling my middle mouse, the power is changing there. So the more power, the faster the displacement and the greater the displacement. Like that. Now by holding and holding down the control button and rolling your middle mouse button, you can scale the brush at your tooltip. And that's how that works right there. I'll zoom out a little bit. I'm going to turn my power down a little bit, holding the shift button and rolling my middle mouse. Now this this area here got pretty distorted pretty quickly since we had such a high power. I'm going to increase it a little bit more. So let's flatten that out. So any, any height that you want to flatten it, just float your cursor, hit the tab button, and you'll see your grid snaps to that location. Now by holding down the space bar, while clicking and holding the left mouse button, you'll see that the terrain actually sucks to that location. And the terrain also behaves in a slightly different manner whether or not you have the space bar activated or not. So let me give you an example of that. So you can see that it quickly snaps up to the, the grid and it creates a harsher angle. Now of course by adjusting the power and also um, changing to a different brush, you can adjust the smoothness of that edge. And you see how that happens right there. 
So again, we're going to go over that. We're going to float our cursor at a height, hit the tab button, hold the space bar, and flatten that area out. By tapping the V button, you can see the grid is moving down. By pressing and holding the V button, you can see it's, it moves rather rapidly. By pressing and holding the B button, it moves up. Now if you can bump, combine all the things I've just taught you, you can create some pretty interesting effects. So I'm holding down the space bar. I'm, I have my index finger on my left hand over the V button, and I'm starting to displace the terrain. Now I want to move the grid up, and I'm holding the V button. Now I'm pinning the V button and moving it down. And you can do this as you like to sculpt your terrain. Now, if, at any point, if you see that the grid is moving far too fast for you to achieve this, you've probably changed you've probably changed the nudge rate or the nudge amount of the grid. To set that to the lowest rating, you can right mouse click, space bar, hover over grid, release, and now you have the editor here. By clicking on these up and down buttons, you can see it moving. So you're nudging the grid up and down. By changing the nudge amount, that changes the rate at which the grid nudges. So currently you can see it's 4.5. I set the nudge amount to 1. I click the button one time, and you can see it changes to 5.5. If I tap my B button one time, you can see it changes to 6.5, and so on. I'm going to hit the tab button again, and the space bar, and flatten that area out. Now I'm holding the V button and the B button, and I'm sculpting the terrain. I go into much more detail on the grid menu on tutorial 002 um, and how to use it, but that's some of the basic features. I want to also show you in AGF how you can go about rotating the terrain brushes as you sculpt and or paint. So first off, I'm going to select a terrain brush that's obviously asymmetrical so what we're doing is clear for you. I'm going to also enable painting menu here. I'm going to select a color. We'll select this grass color and uh, the, the blend amounts fine. I'm going to close this and as I click now you can see I'm texturing and painting simultaneously. And you can hold the R button down and you can see it happen in there. Now, by opening up the dock again and toggling off the sculpting, I can simply paint. And you can see how that happens. I can roll my middle mouse button while holding down my control button. I can hit, hit my F button to focus or frame that area. And these uh, controls are set up just like Maya are and also Unity. So um, I can zoom into an area and paint it. And then again, I'm going to click on my R button, click around. And all these uh, brush features work in the same manner with any of the tools. I can turn on vegetation here by enabling it. And you can see as I rotate, I can change the way the vegetation is applied. If you remember correctly, when we apply something or sculpt, um, we're using the left mouse button. The combination of the left mouse button and the space bar will invert whatever effect you did. So you, you can actually erase the vegetation if you like. Now if you want to selectively erase particular vegetation, the way you would do that is open up the dock. We'll, we'll look at the terrain editor. We'll drag this out for the moment. You can actually toggle on and off different vegetation types and now when you're erasing, you're only erasing that type. You can see as I select another one that I'm erasing a different type there. One last thing I want to go over that's pretty cool is um, global settings or modify global vegetation settings. 
So you're able to click this button here. It's going to open up this secondary menu, dynamic values and application values. By sliding this density here, you can increase or decrease the density. You can adjust the distance. And you can also do this while the game is in play. Um, you can also globally change the saturation of all the vegetation, which is somewhat that's pretty cool because you could very easily create hundreds of textures there. And you can also globally adjust the scale. Now I'm not adjusting the relationship between each vegetation sprite, we're adjusting the overall scale. So now we can right mouse click, go to Tools Start, right mouse click, go to Tools Spawner, right mouse go to Mode Play, click on our ARPG controller, and now we're in our environment.